Please welcome Neil Manowitz. Hello to everyone tuning in around the world. I also want to welcome here everybody in New York City. At Sony, we are passionate about community. We're always striving to get closer to the creators, strengthening this community here, our community. It fuels our innovations. And a perfect example of that is nothing other than just what we had a month ago at Condo Trip. And we brought in a very diverse group of creators from all different fields together where they can come together, connect with each other, learn from industry leaders, and allowing us to get closer to them. They get to share their voice with us, with each other, and share their voice to the entire world. We could also share our latest innovations with them, and I'm excited that we're doing that again this week here in New York at Creative Space. We're always listening to this community. We strive to exceed their expectations. And through this process, their voice is in our innovations. We're empowering cre creators to capture what has never been captured before. We are creating the future together, which leads us to where we are today. So every once in a while, there's a technology that changes the trajectory of an industry. It changes the way we think. And this is one of those times. So for a long while, I've been very excited for this day to come. And with it, I'm very happy to pass it over to my good friend, Oshima-san. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> thank you for coming to Sony's Alpha event today. And thank you for watching this live streaming event through the web. I'm Masaki Oshima. I oversee Sony's consumer camera body business globally. Um, I'd like to explain some updates today. Before moving on to updates, let me touch upon Sony's purpose. It is to fill the world with emotion through the power of creativity and technology. And we've been challenging this in all we do, including the industry image. This year is the 10th anniversary since we introduced the world's first full-frame mirrorless interchangeable lens camera, Alpha 7. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I'm very happy to celebrate this anniversary with all of you and appreciate your strong support of our decade of innovation. We continue to innovate based on our strengths, the five fundamentals, to help creators unleash their creativity. And it has also been a decade of trailblazing and explore the world with our creator community. Let's look back on the journey together. Starting from the original Alpha 7, the voices of creators have been motivating us to exceed their expectations and implement innovations into each model. Over the past decade, Sony has changed the landscape of mirrorless cameras with creators. And this challenge has always been realized with the E-mount lens system. The E-mount system is an expansive one-mount system that connects the words of stills, videos, and cinema seamlessly, supporting a wide range of creative activities. Sony also believes that it's important not only to provide innovative products, but also to contribute to community through activities uh, such as Sony World Photography Hours, Sony Future Filmmaker Awards, and events like Candle Trip and Creative Space. We are committed 
the, to their uh, community and continue to activate with them. We also believe it's important to update our current alpha products with the latest technology to stimulate creativity. So we are planning to have the software update for the Alpha 1 and the Alpha 7 that's Mark 3 next spring. We will bring new features that have been strongly requested by our community. And today, I'd like to tell you about our newest innovation. We strive to enable creators to capture the moment they envision and deliver them uh, at the highest quality. Now, we are pleased to announce a new Telford Prime Lens that incorporates our cutting edge technologies. Yep, it's the F3 300 F2.8 G Master. This is the ultimate 300 mm lens with the world's lightest body and high optical performance worthy of the G Master without any compromise. Sports photographer Mr. Bob Margin tried our new lens. Let's see how it was. Alpha. Look what I've got my hands on. This is the new Sony 3028 GM lens. I've been waiting for this for a long, long time. I'm Bob Martin. I'm a sports photographer. For many, many years, I've covered the major events in sports all across the world. First impressions. This is the lightest 300 2.8 I've ever come across. I think it's probably about the same weight as my first 70 to 200 lens. You know, that's pretty amazing. So this is gonna be a lens for handheld photography. That's the most important thing that comes across here. The balance of this lens is just right. You know, whether you're shooting horizontally or vertically, the lens sits in the palm of your hand. And it's not top heavy, it's not back heavy. The balance is spot on for sports photography. It's pin sharp. Should be, shouldn't it really? It's a Sony GM after all. They're all marvelous lenses, but this is fantastic. And with the converters as well. It's super sharp with a 1.4 and super sharp with a, two, with a doubler, a two times converter. Looking to the future, what do um, sports photographers want? I'll tell you what we want. We want innovation, okay? We want, we want you to keep pushing the bar. But more importantly, if Sony keep innovating, and keep talking to us and listening to what we want, we're gonna be happy because that's the best thing about using Sony equipment. What do you think? Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm very excited, yep. I could say my presentation is all now over and please enjoy trying out new lens, but that's not all I have to share. Alpha. The never ending challenge. A single photo to change views. A single photo to make history. In an age overwhelmed by motion. Sometimes it's only a single powerful frame that can tell the whole story. For photographers who believe in the power of one frame, the challenge of Alpha continues. The new nine. Alpha 9 Mark III. The world's first full-frame global shutter image sensor. Captures the world as it is in an instant without pixel distortion. Free from the limitations of a rolling shutter. An unprecedented way to capture powered by a new image sensor. 
blackout free 120 frames per second. With real time recognition autofocus, an astonishing never before possible 180,000th shutter speed, flash synchronization at any shutter speed, craft worlds beyond the limits of ambient light. Refined product design, made for your hands. A tool for professionals. A tool for photographers, challenged to capture the unseen frame. The power of one frame. Alpha 9, Mark 3. A new story begins here. Finally, we are pleased to announce our long-awaited new camera, the Alpha 9 Mark III. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. The Alpha 9 Mark III is the world's first full-frame mirrorless camera with global shutter image sensor. By exposing and reading out all pixels at the same time, it achieves a new dimension of speed performance up to 120 frames per sec blackout free content shooting with all focus and all exposure. 180,000 maximum shutter speed without any distortion. And can be seen flash at any shutter speed. On our 10th anniversary, we are very excited to introduce these two new innovative products to the Alpha system and open up a new world for creators. For the next decade, we will continue to create the future together with you all. I'm very proud to introduce Alpha 9 Mark III and the 300 F2 8G Master. Okay, that's all my presentation. <laughs> Please enjoy our new product later. Thank you very much. And uh, let me introduce Mike Bubo, tell you more about the products. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's ridiculous. When Oshima-san's here, you guys obviously know things are getting really good. Today's going to be an amazing day. Thank you, Oshima-san. Thank you, Sony. Thank you, engineers. Thank you, everybody. I'm out. I'm just, you know, just kidding. But we're going to go a little bit more in-depth on the camera. Not too in-depth, because I know you guys are excited to get out there and actually use the cameras. And I'm excited to, to, to play with it with you as well. But the Alpha 9 came out six years ago. A lot of you were here. A lot of you remember that camera, because that camera, it really did change the industry. It changed the way we shoot, enabled us to do things that we just never thought possible. Do things electronically, do things silently, 20 frames per second, and it really stabilized and established mirrorless as the format, and it changed the industry. But it made a new generation of cameras. But the 9 Mark III creates a new era of cameras. We made the impossible possible. For so many years, people said that a global shutter camera is impossible, global shutter sensor is impossible, but the Alpha 9 III took the impossible and made it ridiculous. Now, when we look at the global shutter sensor, not only is it a global shutter, but it's stacked, and it's got global shutter, and it's got everything that we've been working towards over years and years and years. 24.6 megapixels, which really is the sweet spot, because you saw it shoots really fast, and we want something that's not enormous files. 24.6 is that sweet spot, especially for global shutter. It gives us global shutter without compromise. People said, you're going to compromise ISO. You're going to compromise dynamic range. Well, we overcame that. We're Sony. We're the largest sensor manufacturer in the world. Of course we're going to do it. We're the only ones that can do it. And you guys know global shutter. We just talked about it. But it exposes and reads every single pixel at the same exact time. Every single one. For 40 years, we've been doing conventional rolling shutter. 
And we've been making it faster and faster and faster. And you saw the Alpha 9 make it as fast as it can possibly get. But no matter how fast the car is, it's still slower than teleportation, right? So it's just different types of speeds. You're not going to have something that is instantaneous. And when you have something that's instantaneous, you literally have zero distortion. We've had anti-distortion. We've had low distortion. But no matter what, when you're swinging that golf club, you see on all of our cameras that don't have a global shutter, you're going to see distortion. When you're recording outside of a moving vehicle and you're trying to record something moving, you're going to get distortion. But gone are the days where you even need to think about a mechanical shutter because with a global shutter, you have completely no distortion with, with um, video and stills. It changes everything. And of course, powering this entire camera and being able to process enormous amounts of data is the Bion's XR processing engine, giving us eight times more power than the 9 Mark II. But the 9 Mark III can shoot really, really fast, like you saw. The global shutter gives us the ability to shoot at 120 frames per second. And I know everyone's thinking, well, lots of cameras can shoot really fast, so what's the trade-off? What's going to happen here? Like, what are you going to do? Well, we can do it without trade-offs. We can do it with full autofocus, full subject recognition. We're going to be able to shoot for 1.6 seconds, which is 192 frames. We can shoot in 14-bit RAW. So if you're shooting RAW plus JPEG at 120 frames per second, that's six gigabytes of information per second. So talking about the power to be able to process all that, we need that DRAM, we need the stack, we need the global to be able to give us everything that this camera can do. And of course, when you look through the viewfinder, you need to have blackout free. We're pushing the limits. It's here to stay. Blackout free gives us the ability to look through the viewfinder and have an uninterrupted view of your subject. You, don't, you can see the world through your lens, through the viewfinder, the same way that you see the world with your eyes. Now, I know what you're going to say. Can it keep up? Can the lenses keep up? Can the camera keep up in terms of autofocus? Heck yeah, it can. 120 frames per second autofocus and auto exposure to be able to give autofocus calculations for every single frame. Another thing we're introducing on this camera is pre-capture. Because no matter how good you are, there's a moment that you're going to miss. I'm getting older, so sometimes maybe my reaction's not as fast as I want it to be, but I'm going to blame it on the unpredictable nature of my subjects. But anyway, so we might miss the timing. So as I'm sitting here half pressing the shutter, the camera's continuously recording images for me, up to a full second, up to 120 frames per second. So once I press that shutter, it's going to record everything after I press the shutter, and it's going to record everything that I set up before I press the shutter to be able to give us the ability to never miss the moment. I mean, if 120 frames per second isn't enough to miss the moment, now you can be sure you're not going to miss the moment because you have pre-capture. So for that bird, for that wildlife photographer that's sitting there waiting for the bird and waiting for the bird and waiting for the bird, like now, and you might miss the moment, now you can be rest assured that you don't miss the moment. And I know 120 frames per second is a lot. I know a lot of people are like, I don't need 120 frames per second. But you can use it in a different way now. Normally, if you have a feature like that, you'd have to set the camera up to always shoot like that. And setting your camera up to always shoot at 120 frames per second is pretty limiting. It's a lot of images. So we created something called Speed Boost. We added this little cool custom button on the front of the camera. That's the Speed Boost button. So I can be shooting at the speed of a 9 Mark II, which is 20 frames per second. Oh. I can be shooting at the speed of, and then I can just press that custom button to be able to go to 120 frames per second. So I'll be sitting here shooting 20 frames per second, and without taking my finger off that shutter, I'll be able to then just see that moment, see that moment, and be able to just capture that specific precise moment to be able to get that shot at 120 frames per second. 20 frames, 20 frames, 20 frames, 120 frames. And I know what you're saying. When you go and play it back, how am I going to go through all these images? I'm going to sit here, I'm going to be rolling through it for like 20 minutes, this is annoying. But it actually, when you play back the image, it shows you one file, you press it, and then it plays back a video. Because why not? It's 120 frames per second. And then you can just stop the video at that peak action, and then you can start, you can protect it, you can do what you want. So you can be able to go through 120 frames per second fast. It's like, you took a limb from me. I'm like, no, that's mine. But anyway. Now, I know what the video said. It said 8,000 of a second. It's 80,000th of a second. We need a comma in there. So we can shoot at a faster shutter speed than any camera out there, ultra fast. So because we're reading every pixel instantaneously, why not just do it as fast as possible? So we can capture things 
crystal clear. We can capture the fastest action and freeze it and freeze that moment in time, capture that one image. But I heard your reaction. Flash think at any and all shutter speeds. When I say any and all, yeah. Like that is everything we're talking about is just game changing. When I say any and all, that also means 80,000th of a second. Flash shutter speed. Flash sync. What? It's crazy. Making me, whatever. Anyway. It also enables us to do away with certain features that we're always trying to work around conventional rolling shutter sensors. HSS was invented to work around conventional rolling shutter sensors because light is light. It flashes really fast. It's extremely fast. So we had to create HSS to be able to keep up and slow down that rolling shutter. But now with global shutter, we're able to free ourselves from HSS and be able to do full TTL, and we can do full flash output at any shutter speed. So this way it's going to be synced up in any way that you want. So this way you don't have to have those limitations of HSS. And it'll work with third-party flashes at 80,000th of a second as well. And you're going to see shooting here with some other strobes, you're going to be able to do that. Another huge thing for global shutter, and we've seen it on our broadcast cameras, we've seen it on our 10-year-old F55 cinema camera, flicker-free shooting, no banding in a single image ever because you're reading every pixel at the same time. So you're not going to have to worry about the refresh rate of the light. It's always weird talking about refresh rates because we don't see it, but the camera can see it because it's moving fast enough. So now a single image will never have it. But now every other or every other image will have it because you'll have one frame perfect. One frame might be on the low part of the light, so it might be dark. So we have anti-flicker shooting and variable shutter. The camera is instantly able to see the refresh rate of the, of the light and be able to only shoot at the peaks of the light. So that way every single frame in video or stills will be timed perfectly to be able to give you a perfect frame every time with no banding, no color differentiation, anything. So even if you're shooting an athlete and you have the LED signs behind you, those LED signs don't have banding anymore either. It's going to be everything that we thought it could do is what it's doing. It's awesome. And at Creative Space, we introduced the Alpha 7R Mark V, and we introduced dedicated AI processing unit, changing the way that we autofocus and have subject recognition forever. And this camera brings it to a whole nother level, giving us the best autofocus, the best subject recognition we've ever seen. Being able to do human pose estimation and go beyond just seeing eyes and a face. Being able to focus on a human and focus on an eye when they're wearing goggles, when they're wearing a mask, when they're wearing a helmet, when they're really small within the frame where they keep going in and out of the frame. This gymnast shot just really summarizes the entire thing perfectly because they're so tight in the frame and they're moving so fast, it's keeping every single one of those 120 frames sharp on the eye. And of course it works for animals, it works for birds, it works for cats, it works for dogs, it works for cars, trains, and planes. It's, it's kind of cheating, I'm sorry, but it is. But, why not take the advantage, right? I said I autofocus was cheating back in the day. Well, this is cheating times a million, right? This is already having the answers to the test. So we can concentrate on just taking pictures. We can concentrate on video. We don't have to worry about messing around with all of our controls to be able to get the shot. We can actually trust the technology to do it for us. I said it's the fastest autofocusing system we've ever had, 759 focusing points covering about 96% of the area. And it's able to shoot in extremely low light, down to negative 5 EV. I know what you're thinking, but we're doing negative 5 EV at 1.8. Not 1.2, not 1.0, just saying, 1.8. So it's able to focus in really, really low light. And like Oshima-san said, like Neil said, we're always listening. Sometimes it takes us a while, a lot of firmware, but we got it. But even little things like changing the focusing points. We got a request from some of the agencies. They want smaller focusing points. We gave it to them. We had small, medium, and large. Now we added extra small and extra large. So this way you're able to have a focusing point that's about the size of an eye autofocus thing. So that way you can get really creative shots and make sure you're going to get the perfect autofocus every time. We don't just want the technology to give us more power. We also want it to make it easier for us in our day-to-day. We have eight stop stabilization in the body by itself. Without the need to bring in a lens, it's by itself, giving us the ability to shoot at eighth of a second, enabling us to shoot at really low shutter speeds, being able to do something where you, don't, you can free yourself and be able to do more. And with a stabilized lens, you're able to get an even better viewing experience through the viewfinder than we did before. We talked about stills so much. But let's talk about video. Global shutter for video is like where it's at. That's what we want, right? So you're going to be able to get completely no distortion 
in video as well as stills. We talked about it before, but seeing it for some reason makes it different, right? So you can be in that moving truck and you can be panning back and forth. Your lines are laser straight. You're going to be able to do things that cameras just have been dreaming about doing forever. And it's able to do it in 4K, 60p, with 6K oversampling. And it's our first alpha camera to do 4K, 120p, without cropping. Yeah. And it's got all the other suite of amazing video features that we've been introducing, like 10-bit 422-all-i, like S-Cinetone, 16-bit output. And it also has dynamic active mode stabilization, which doesn't get enough love. Again, it's something that we can utilize and use and give us gimbal-like stabilization without carrying around a gimbal. It's a slight crop, like 1.2, depending on your situation, but it works, and I implore you to try it out. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. Again, every generation of camera, you always see tweaks. You always see improvements, and we've had a big improvement on this camera in terms of the grip, in terms of the way it feels. It feels better than any camera we've had before, to me. And we've even changed the placement of the shutter button. So instead of being more on the top, it's more natural to your hand. So you have less fatigue throughout the day. And the shutter button feels better because we have the pre-capture now. It's just more responsive. You can even change your shutter lag if you want. It's just the ultimate tool. We showed you the C5 button in the front that you can customize, that you can do speed boost. We've even changed the mode dial, the drive mode dial on the top to be able to lock it out. So that way you can access those controls from the menu or from a custom button so you can do one-handed operation. So if you're in an underwater housing or using like, uh, something outside to be able to protect it from rain or you just have one hand, it's perfect. You're going to be able to control it all with one hand. Four-axis multi-angle LCD. Same LCD that we saw on the 7R5. So you can be able to go off to the side, you can go up the top, you can go on the bottom. It doesn't add any bulk to the camera. I mean, you know, it's just, I mean, if it's already perfect, just don't change it. And it's got an incredible color gamut, something that doesn't get discussed enough. It's got full DCI-P3 color gamut on it. So what you're recording is what's on the screen. So you can make sure that you're seeing exactly what the camera's recording. So at 120 frames per second, you want the field of view through the viewfinder to be as beautiful as possible. So it's our 9.4 million dot OLED EVF. But one thing we're doing differently here is that now you can have 120 frames per second refresh rate at the highest possible quality. You don't have to bring down the quality to shoot at higher refresh rates. You can go even higher at you know, human vision at 240 frames per second, and that will bring it down a little bit. But now at 120 frames per second, we're at 9.4 million dots without any compromise whatsoever. We've even rethought the grip. So the grip is now our first grip that really perfectly mimics the same ergonomics vertically as it does horizontally. We've even added that C5 button in the front so you can do your speed boost vertically as well as horizontally. We've made the shutter exactly the same shutter, the exactly same feel, the exactly same placement. We've had the same customizable dials in the back. The entire thing is just reinvented and feels so much nicer. And we've even added parallel power now. So instead of draining each battery independently, it sees it as one big battery and drains it together, and we're able to get 15% more battery life when using the grip. So everything's been thought about. Of course, it's dust and moisture resistant. Of course, it's rugged. Of course, it's magnesium alloy, just like our other cameras. And that's the Alpha 9 Mark III, coming in spring 2024, $59.99. <clears throat> it's ridiculous. It's so good. But of course, we have 8 million other things to talk about because we don't just do things lightly. It's not just a camera, but it's also a lens. It's not just any lens. It's a G Master lens. Everything you've come to expect from G Master is in this 300. The world's lightest 300, the first mirrorless fixed 2.8 300 that's out there, and it expands on our already amazing lineup of super telephoto lenses. We have the 3, we have the 4, we have the 6, all of them breaking the mold when they came out. I remember when the 400 first came out, I was like, this thing is really light, it's balanced, perfect, but nothing feels like the 300. I can't wait for you to get your hands on the 300. You're literally going to be like, you guys only fake 300s here. I don't understand what's going on. But this makes 75 E-mount lenses. To Hashima-san's point, in 10 years, we've created 52 full-frame lenses. That's five, more than five lenses per year. That's creating a lens kit that's bigger than anybody else, that's got something for everybody. But I'm really excited about a 300, so let's talk about that. Unbelievable resolution, unbelievable bokeh, and of course, in true G Master fashion, 
the amount of sharpness in the, f in the middle is the same as when you get to the edges. Not having to worry about image compromise at 2.8 or image compromise towards the edges of the frame, you're going to get image quality throughout the entire thing. And this lens is perfect for everything. It's perfect for sports. It's perfect for wildlife. It's perfect for portraits. I mean, I might be weird, but I love shooting portraits at 300. It's a different look than what anyone else has. And now it being so light and so small and so compact, it gives me the ability to do something and do that type of creativity a little bit easier. But you do have to be farther away, so you have to talk to someone a little different. But really fast and precise autofocus. Of course, it's got to keep up with the 9 Mark III. So it's shooting with two XD linear motors. And these are our latest motors. They give us unbelievable speed, unbelievable thrust, unbelievable silence in half the size of traditional linear motors, but still able to keep up for the Alpha 9 III and beyond. And it gives the ability to autofocus and keep up with subject recognition, do eye autofocus, be precise enough to do eye autofocus with just a sliver of the screen being in focus, and it's able to do this like nothing has ever been done before. So I said it's light. It's hard to describe light on a PowerPoint presentation or with my hands. But it's crazy light. It's 51.9 ounces. That's 40% lighter than the 400-2.8 and 30% smaller. It makes the 400 sound really big and heavy, but it's not if you've used it. This lens is the same weight as the original 7200-2.8 G Master. So if you're used to carrying around a 7200, you're used to carrying around a 300. So this can be that second lens. This can be your all-day lens. This gives you better mobility in terms of moving with it when you're on the floor shooting a basketball game or a volleyball game. This gives you more movement and easier operation when you're panning. But it's not just about light, right? It's also about balance. And that's one thing that we introduced with the 400 and the 600 is the balance. We made this lens with the lens attached in mind. So you can put your finger right where the tripod mount is and balance a camera without a grip and the lens and be able to have perfect balance, meaning all the weight is right there. So even though the lens is extremely light, it feels even lighter when you're holding it, when you're panning with it, when you're moving with it. It's just perfect. Of course, you can use our 1.4 and 2x teleconverters, turning your 300 into a 420, turning your 300 into a 600, so you can have something small and light that's also really versatile. You can just, you know, wear those things with your 1.4 and 2x and swap it out. But another innovation on this camera is the function ring. It's great. Little click of the function ring instantly goes from full frame to APS-C, giving you that 420 millimeters at the click of a button without having to press anything else. Your hand's already here anyway, so just click it and you get that extra reach without any other compromise. Even the hood's been reimagined. So instead of the lock dial that we've had for a long time, we have a push button now. It's one, oper one hand operation, I take it off. One hand operation, I turn it around. One hand operation, I throw it back in my bag. Whatever I need to do, it just makes it much, much easier operation than we had before. Always thinking of even little things to be able to make it better. High reliability, dust and moisture resistant, magnesium alloy everywhere. The outside, the inside, the chassis, everything's magnesium alloy, keeping up with the rigors of every single day use, which is what we expect you to do with it. And that's the 3028, and that's going to come in at about $6,000, also spring of 2024. So those are the, the numbers of the day. <laughs> but I'm still here, and we still have more to go. Firmware, I heard the applause. I think it might have been bigger for the firmware than it was for the camera. So. <laughs> We're bringing new things, and we're listening, and we're trying as hard as we can, I promise you, to bring new updates to cameras. So you saw that there's going to be an update to the Apple One. You saw there's going to be an update to the 7S Mark III. We're even announcing an update and talking about an update to the Alpha 9 Mark III. So, and things like DCI 4K 24P in the Alpha 7S Mark III, things like breathing compensation, things like better workflow capabilities. And even in our cameras, we're also announcing that we're introducing C2PA format to be able to have copyright and authenticity protection. And we're working to because the world needs it. And our cameras, and Sony's one of the founding members of that group, and we're really working to make sure that our cameras do everything that we need it to do. 9 Mark III, 3028, new firmware, authenticity. We don't do anything lightly. This is Sony, this is innovation. We're changing the industry every single day. This camera is going to change the way that we see things. So I am done. I can't wait to get out there and shoot with you. I'm so thankful that everyone's here. I love seeing all your faces, and I can't wait to see what everyone creates with this. So let's create together. But before I go, I do want to show you an incredible video that the team put together. 
always gives me goosebumps. You guys know that, but I'm a sucker and I'm sensitive. But so thank you very much. Can't wait to hang out with you guys. Goodbye. For me, when I'm photographing, what I'm really seeking is just a moment of real ethereal beauty. We want that moment in time, that single flash of light. alive into a beautiful story. To freeze time in a way that encapsulates emotion and then really makes you think. And most importantly, you feel. We're always trying to advance, to progress. To change the way people see the world. And every once in a while, something comes along that changes what you thought was possible. And this is one of those moments. creative possibilities this camera opens up. This is going to change everything.